I'm here at Samsung with their latest bridge camera. This is the Samsung EX2F. Now it follows on from the EX1 which launched a couple of years back. Now the F on this version is to stand for Wi-Fi. This is a Wi-Fi compatible model. Now at a glance it may not look like much has changed since the EX1 but there are some fairly substantial changes not just in the body but also inside. It's got a magnesium body so it should be a lot more durable than the previous model. Not that there are any issues that we heard of. Um, the changes to the lens are fairly substantial. This one has a Schneider lens which starts at an aperture of f1.4 that you can see on here so it should let in plenty of light. Now to go along with that Samsung have also changed the sensor in this model so you now have a CMOS sensor in here rather than the CCD that was on the EX1. Now that they also say should help you with low light shooting so expect to see improvements in quality there. Now as I've said this one is a Wi-Fi model so you've got a lot of options in, in terms of connectivity so you can share the photos you take on here with friends, you can also automatically back up some of your photos to the cloud or to your own computer. Now we're not sure at the moment how much cloud storage might be available to people free of charge or not at this point but we'll, we'll find out in due course. Um, other options with the Wi-Fi are that you can also share to social networking sites so you can upload your pictures directly to Facebook or Picasa or Photobucket or your videos to YouTube. Now talking of video, this model shoots video at uh, HD 1080p and it can shoot at 30 or 25 frames per second depending on the setting you're using. Now you have the dedicated video button here on the back which is like you had on the EX1 but there are a few changes to the dials and buttons on this model. Now it's nice to see that they've kept with two dials on the top here so you can see what functions are available and easily switch between different settings. Obviously you've got the smart auto mode so that's for if you just want to point and shoot the camera will select the best settings for you. You've also got a full manual mode so you can control everything on the camera pretty much and choose your own settings if you want to take a lot more creative control over your shots. Along with that you've also got aperture and shutter priority in a program mode and you can shoot videos we've said before. There's also a lot of kind of smart filters so you can take panoramas, uh, you can change the look of the photo so you can make it look like a cartoon or a miniature effect. So you can add lots of effects and take lots of different scene modes really easily with this camera. Now when we were talking about the manual modes here, you've got this really handy dial on the front which was on the EX1. And this you can use to easily toggle between settings. So if you're in the shutter priority mode, you can use this to change the shutter settings really simply while you're lining up your shot. You've also got the smart panel on here, which is a really handy feature. The fact that you've lost a couple of modes off the back here because of the Wi-Fi, so you've lost the ability to go straight into ISO settings. It's actually really simple to do on this camera anyway. By pressing the function button, you can go straight into this smart panel, and that gives you all the things that you can possibly change on the camera pretty much and you can easily do that by rotating the dial here or you can use this dial on the front to alter your settings so although maybe there aren't so much in term there's not so much in terms of instant access you can really quickly change things through the function button button and using this smart panel now uh, it has a built-in microphone and there's a stereo microphone which you can see here but there's no option to attach an external mic so we'll have to see when we get it into testing how well the microphone fares in video mode um, as I say, you have this hot shoe here, which you can use to attach an external flash or you can attach an optical viewfinder. Those are options for you, which is quite handy because although you've got this um, AMOLED screen on the back here, which is articulated so you can pull it out, twist it around, you might still struggle with reflections in really bright sunlight. We'll have to see, obviously, until we get into testing. I'm, I'm in a room here, so I can't quite tell. But yes, you, you have that option to buy an optical viewfinder if you prefer to have something you can put up to your eye rather than relying on the screen. Now, I mentioned you can buy a flash for this, but it does have a pop-up flash here, which was like on the previous model. You can't adjust the flash strength, but obviously having a flash is really handy for taking pictures indoors. Compared with the previous model, the EX1, Samsung's improved the optical zoom on this model from 3 times to 3.3, so you should be able to get that little bit closer to distant subjects. They've also increased the ISO range, so you can now change the settings from 100 all the way up to 12,800, although obviously you'll expect to see some graininess if you're using higher ISO settings, as we'd expect with any camera. 
So that's a quick rundown of the Samsung EX2F. Now as yet we don't know how much it's going to be retailing for but we'll add that information when we get it. It's expected to launch sometime around the back end of July but to find out more about this camera go to witch.co.uk.